tell a story because I'm a journalist and that's what I do. Once upon a time, there was a girl called Bridie. She was born three years after the end of the War of Independence into a farming family in East Cork. Bridie was beautiful inside and out. She had raven black hair, a tiny waist, and a ferocious desire for justice. One evening after Bridie had turned into a woman, one evening a politician called to the family home to see her father. Bridie wet the tea and went and sat in a corner and stroked the dog while her father and the politician had a meeting. Afterwards, Billy, for that was the politician's name, said he felt powerfully jealous of that dog that night as Bridie stroked him. Inevitably, Bridie and Billy got married and they set up their family home in the house in West Cork, where Billy had grown up. The first time that Bridie entered the dining room of that house, she froze in horror because hanging on the wall beside the fireplace was a macabre photograph. It showed three open coffins with a dead man in each coffin. And she asked Billy that night what was the story of this photograph. He explained to her that it, this photograph hung in the homes of the, his extended family and that the photograph showed three men called Begley O'Donoghue and Galvin who had been shot dead by the Black and Tans during the War of Independence. The night before their funeral, uh, some men in the town had gone up to the church mortuary and stood the coffins upright and taken this photograph so that they could show that the men had been tortured before they had been shot. These men, by the way, were about, were in the middle of setting up an ambush themselves at the Black and Tans when they were caught. And one of them was Billy's cousin, John Galvin. Uh, after that, um, Bridie had a great relationship with her mother-in-law, Billy's mother, and uh, she told her stories about the War of Independence, which would have been uh, a real novelty to her because she had grown up on this farm in East Cork, which didn't have the, the same history as West Cork at the time. Excuse me, I've been told not to use notes, but I'm very bad at speaking um, off the top of my head. Yesterday was the 85th birthday of Billy's sister, and I went to the party. And I asked her about this photograph, and she reminisced about it, and she said that when she was, she was the youngest member of the family, and that the piano was in the dining room, and she would have to go into the dining room to practice the piano. And she used to walk in sideways into the room so that she couldn't see the photograph. She was so terrified of it. And then she said, I wonder what those men would think of this country that they lost their lives for. And I said, well, what do you think they would think? And she said, I don't know. And a cloud came down on her face. And she said, you know what my father and those people did was never for themselves. They didn't go out and put their lives at risk for their own pleasure. They did it for other people. Um, I thought that was a very telling thing she said. In 1948, John A. Costello declared Ireland a republic, but it was a bit of a half-baked republic that he declared. Because, for instance, it, the word republic was never inserted into the official name of our country, um, which suggests you know, that we weren't fully um, engaged with being a republic. Um, and despite what Channel 4 newsreaders and soccer pundits think, this is not actually the Republic of Ireland, it's simply Ireland. There are three planks um, in a republic, three basic planks, and we all know what they are. Liberty, equality and fraternity. And it seems to me that that generation of those men in that photograph actually delivered the first one of those 
they did leverage political freedom in the sense that we had self-determination for the first time. The succeeding generations have failed abysmally to deliver the other two elements of republic, um, equality and fraternity. In fact, I would say quite the contrary, they have gone out of their way to make sure that we have neither. And I think it's because of that that we actually squandered our self-determination um, in handing that over to the Troika. Um, and yet Irish people aren't selfish. You know, that this is the great mystery. We know this from the history of our missionaries, uh, from the NGOs today who are all over the world, from the consistent generosity of Irish people whenever there is a humanitarian crisis, from individual displays of uh, generosity. And yes, I'm going to bring Daniel O'Donnell into this in the form of his wife, Magella O'Donnell, who did the most amazing thing last Friday night, having her head shaved live on The Late Late Show, addressing one of the great taboos in Ireland and uh, around the world, and at the same time raising a quarter of a million euro for um, the Irish Cancer Society. You know, so we are good people, and we tend to forget that. Our problem is that our institutions have been designed to stop equality and to stop fraternity thriving, because it suits the people who succeeded the foreign oppressor, the people who became our rulers, our own people. Um, it is because of that that there are nearly seven men to every woman in Dáil Éireann now. It's because of that that the government has been able to merge the Irish Human Rights Commission with the Equality Authority to do away with the selection panel that was set up for transparency, to disregard its recommendations, and there hasn't been a word about it. Um, this is a country that it, its institutional heart believes that bankrupt solicitors and doctors should live in better houses than most everybody else. Um, it believes that if politicians cannot use Shannon Aaron as a creche or a retirement home for their own careers, then Shannon Aaron shouldn't exist at all. Um, Billy had the same sense of duty to his fellow humans as had his father who incidentally became an independent councillor after he was released from internment in Ballykinder in County Down. And uh, Billy also became a town commissioner representing Fianna Fáil. I can't begin to imagine what he would think of that party now that he so proudly represented. Um, every Christmas, he would go out on Christmas Day and deliver um, Christmas dinner to the poorest homes in the town. And Bridie didn't complain because she believed as well in fairness. And that was the, the strong bond that held them together. Uh, they also believed in the power of names. Um, Billy's second name was Terence, um, in memory of Terence McSweeney, the Lord Mayor of Cork, who, di who died. And when it came to naming their own children, they decided that they wanted powerful names. And so they decided to call one of their children a name that means justice. But the parish priest was, wasn't having any of it because he said there was no, uh, no saint in heaven with that name. So they called down a priest from Dublin who did the christening. And that's why I'm called Justine today. And I think it's a reason why I'm convinced that instead of referendums on abolishing the Shabbat or lowering the voting age to 16, we should be having a referendum to change the official name of our country to the Republic of Ireland. And that way, it won't be so easy to just go on pretending to be something that we're not. Right. Woo!